In about March or April this year, Australia went into a massive lockdown. Lots of people lost their jobs. Lots of people lost work hours. Uh, if people didn't get any money, they would probably have lost their houses or not been able to pay the bills or whatever else. So the government had no option but to provide stimulus to people. Uh, this was mainly in the form of JobKeeper, which was going to cost billions of dollars, or which is currently costing billions of dollars. Uh, JobKeeper was essentially a $1,500 per fortnight pay to um, all the employees of companies who had lost revenue. Well, lost 30% of revenue, I believe. Unfortunately, because I was a university worker, or I am a university worker, I was not entitled to JobKeeper. Everybody around me was receiving this $1,500 per fortnight, which for some people was actually a pay rise. Some people were literally only earning $100 or $200 a week. So a $1,500 per fortnight pay is actually an increase in salary for them. So yeah, they were sitting pretty. But as I said, I was working for a university, and for some reason they were not entitled to JobKeeper. However, my work hours were reduced because of lack of international students, and therefore I was missing out on a fair bit of income. But there was the alternative job seeker payment, which is a lesser payment of about $560 or $70, I believe, per fortnight. But during the pandemic, the government offered an extra stimulus of $550 per fortnight. They called it the coronavirus supplement. So in total, you could get something like $1,100 per fortnight. As I said, everyone around me was getting this JobKeeper package, and some people were getting this job seeker, And actually, some people were getting both. So some people around me were getting like two dollars or $3,000 a fortnight. Just in welfare, and I thought, oh, come on, I want some of this too, because here I am losing hours, here I am not getting much money from YouTube and everything else. So I thought, oh yeah, I'm going to take some of this stimulus, because that's how the government were promoting it. They were promoting it as stimulus. They weren't, they weren't really promoting it as like helping individuals. They were, they were promoting it as helping the economy. So I thought to myself, well, yeah, I want to help the economy. The last time I was on welfare was back in my university days. That was more than 20 years ago. And I got something called Ausstudy, I believe. And it was only worth like $20 or $30 a fortnight at the time, for me anyway, because I was living with parents, all of which I had to pay back after about six months. So that was a bit ridiculous. So really, I haven't taken anything from the government over the years. So I thought it was my chance to get on welfare and get some of this stimulus in my hands. Everyone else around me had it, so why not me? So I jumped online and went to their website and applied for the job seeker payment. Unfortunately, everyone else in Australia had the same idea and was also applying, making the website pretty much crash. I saw all the news reports of the website not responding very well and keep trying, just keep trying the next day if you can't get on and blah blah blah. So I tried the next day, and it took me all of the morning to fill out my application. I finally got to the last page, update, uh, uploaded my documents, and hit the submit button. It sat there spinning around for a little bit, and then suddenly an error message came up. Oh, we're so sorry, due to unprecedented demand, blah blah blah, uh, you are unable to apply for JobSeeker online. I was like, what? Come on, I just spent all morning doing this. And it said something like, all your documents have been submitted successfully, however you need to uh, go to the nearest uh, service centre to continue the application. I thought, oh gosh, come on. I mean, the government are here telling us that we have to stay indoors, we have to stay away from other people, but yet they're telling me I have to go down to the service centre to queue up, obviously, to finish off this uh, application. But what other option did I have? So I decided to wait one day and try to submit the next day online. The same error message came up, you must go down to the local service centre in order to finish this application. So I bit the bullet and went down to the local service centre. And so did everybody else. There were literally hundreds of people. There were probably about three or four hundred people lined up going around the uh, block. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to take hours. So I got in line, and of course all the news media were there with, <clears throat> with their cameras and so on, taking uh, pictures of us to put on the local news. And I decided that I didn't want to be on the local news, so I kind of uh, covered my face with my hat and looked away from all the cameras. Later that night I actually did see myself on the news. Luckily you couldn't see my face, so nobody could tell it was me. But yes, they were claiming that oh, hundreds of people without work. Thousands of people lining up at Centrelink, blah, blah, blah. It kind of wasn't true because I did have a job. It's just that I had reduced hours, but they weren't claiming that. They were just claiming that everybody was without work and needed Centrelink madly. I started to think 
There were so many people down there, like hundreds of people all across Australia going to their local uh, Centrelink offices, I started to think that maybe the government were intentionally not letting people apply for it online. Maybe they wanted all those people to go down to their office, go down to the city and line up so that it could just kind of promote that the government are doing something, that they're giving out all this stimulus. If everybody applied for it online successfully, then there'd be nobody lining up at Centrelink, and there'd be no news to cover really. Anyway, I was in line for about an hour and this lady was walking up and down the queue, uh, asking everybody whether they needed to be there or not basically. She was obviously an employee of Centrelink and she had this big burly sort of co-worker next to her just to make sure nobody did any funny business. Uh, she had an iPad or whatever in her hands and was asking people questions. Finally, she arrived at me and asked me, oh, so what's your business with Centrelink today? And I said, oh, look, I'm just trying to apply for the job seeker payment. I applied online, tried to submit, it wouldn't go through. They asked me to come down here. She goes, oh, that's okay. We fixed up the website. You can go back home. You can submit again. And I thought to myself, no, I've, I've tried two days in a row now. It didn't submit. I'm not going back home because if I do, I'll have to come back here anyway. But she tried to sort of pressure me to go home. I said, oh, no, no, I've tried a couple of times. It just won't go through. And she goes, well, you can go home and ring Centrelink instead. We can do it all over the phone now. And then I thought to myself, there's a million people or three million people without work in Australia suddenly, and they want me to go home and ring Centrelink. Yeah, get real. I mean, they'll be, I'll never get through. I'd be there all day. I'd have to take time off work to just ring Centrelink. It wasn't going to happen. So I held firm and said, oh, sorry, I'll just like to line up here and go inside. She kind of rolled her eyes at me and said, well, that's up to you, but you'll be waiting for a few hours. I said, well, that's fine, because if I go home and ring Centrelink, I'll be waiting for at least a few hours, if not all day. Anyway, she walked off a little bit mad with me, I suppose. I turned around and she was saying, she was asking people behind me the same questions and some of them were standing firm like I was and others were just going, oh, okay, I'll go home. So about half of them, I guess, went home, but I suppose most of them would come back to Centrelink the next day or whatever, knowing that they couldn't sort it out at home. Anyway, a couple more hours went past and I finally got to within like eyesight of the door. Uh, I could see there was a security guard there letting people in and out. Apparently only 20 or 30 people could enter the facility at one time due to social distancing and all the rest of it. I finally got to the head of the line and there was the security guard in front of me. Uh, he was looking at me and asked me, oh, how's things going today? And I was like, oh, not very good. I think he was from New Zealand. He was like, oh, hey, Brew, how's everything going? Uh, yeah, not too bad. I uh, didn't really want to be down here today, but uh, the online website wasn't working very well. Oh yeah, tell me about it. I hate Zenlink. <laughs> so I thought that was quite funny. He was working for Zenlink, but well, at least working as a security guard for Zenlink, but he did not like Zenlink very much. So bro, did you lose your job? Uh, no, not really. I just got less hours, but I kind of wanted to get that coronavirus supplement. Oh yeah, that's a pretty sweet deal, isn't it? An extra $550. Don't have to do a damn thing, just get $550. Anyway, somebody walked out and so he sent me in. Oh yeah, bro, just walk in, turn left, hand sanitize, use the hand sanitizer, and then walk over to the chick in the walk over to the chick standing at the pedestal over there. So anyway, I went in, uh, talked to the chick at the pedestal, and she told me I just had to take a seat. About 10 minutes later, they had everything sorted, my application went through, and that was it. So it took me all day to um, get my application through, but it was well worth it, I suppose. Got home, uh, the next fortnight, I got my uh, however much dollars, plus the $550 bonus, which I thought, oh wow, this is sweet. Uh, <laughs> However, because I had a job, I was still working, I had to report that income every fortnight on their website, and that lessened my rate. Now, the thing with this job seeker is if you lessen your base rate to less than zero, you, you're not entitled to that bonus $550. So for example, if I worked 29 hours at the university over the fortnight, I'd get about, say, $950 plus I'd get a couple of dollars in Job Seeker, plus the bonus $550 coronavirus supplement. So yeah, it was really worth it. So in total, I got about $1,500. But if I worked 30 hours, so just one extra hour, I'd get about $1,000 from the university and not be entitled to the $550 bonus supplement. So essentially, working the extra hour lost me $500, which is what what they call the welfare cliff. Now, the government were aware of this. It was plastered all over the ABC and whatever else, um, but they knew that it was only a temporary solution and so it wasn't going to be a huge problem over the 
six months or however long they were planning to keep this coronavirus supplement going. I remember going to Kmart and overhearing some workers talking about oh, not wanting to work too many hours so that they continue to get the bonus supplement and all the rest of it. So yeah, people were intentionally working less hours in order to get this supplement. But maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that was giving other people more hours to work as well. So it's kind of sharing the load a bit, I suppose. Also, every fortnight I'd get a phone call from a job agency. Uh, this was basically just part of the package, part of getting welfare. You have to get this to uh, this fortnightly call from a job agency. Now, I think ordinarily I'd have to go down to the job agency, but because of social distancing and all the rest of it, they were ringing us instead, which I was happy with. Uh, they, they'd call me in the supermarket, they'd call me when I was at home, they'd call me when I was brushing my teeth, just at sort of strange times. They'd give you a, a basic uh, schedule, I suppose, but they never called on time. It was always 15 minutes early or 20 minutes late or sometimes even an hour late. Uh, they'd ask me just simple questions. Oh, have you found any work yet? Are you looking for work? Uh, what did you do in order to be, you know, improve your job situation? Blah, 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 blah. It's just all rather uh, demeaning sort of talk in my opinion, but I just went along with it in order to get that $550 bonus supplement. Ultimately, I didn't find these job agencies really helpful in any way. They didn't really help me find a job or anything else. I think they were just there to... Uh, sort of pressure people to look for work. And I've heard that from a lot of other welfare recipients. They say that these job agencies are effectively useless. Uh, they don't know why they call them all the time or why they have to go there, but they're there and you have to put up with it. I think from the government's point of view, they're just trying to uh, make it as uncomfortable as possible. They don't want people getting comfortable on welfare. So by pressuring them all the time with people calling them and all the rest of it, it just makes you feel like, well, I don't really want to do this. I'll do it if I have to, but I'd rather have a job. But due to the pandemic, there was no job search requirement. Uh, ordinarily, you'd have to search for something like 20 jobs per month. I knew a few people who had to do that and they said it was a nightmare. Looking for 20 jobs per month is just insane. It's like one job a day, uh, weekdays, which sounds okay if you do it for just a short time, but if you're doing it over months, it's just hundreds of jobs you're applying for and you're getting hundreds of rejection letters and everybody else on Job Seeker is doing it as well. So a lot of these small companies are overwhelmed with applications and they just get into the habit of denying every single one. So yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare, honestly. Around August, the government reintroduced their uh, job search requirement, but it was only four jobs per month. So that's like one a week. Um, I didn't really want to find a job as I already had one. Um, I knew that eventually my hours would come back. But just to meet this requirement, I applied for jobs that I could work from home. So jobs like marking jobs at uni and so on. September came around and the government uh, extended the job seeker payment, uh, the job seeker, sorry, the coronavirus supplement until December, but they reduced it down to $250. So I thought, well, I may as well keep going if I can. I mean, the extra $250 is fairly cool. However, November came around and the government decided to increase the job search uh, quota to eight jobs per month. Now, that was four jobs that was enough for me. I was barely finding any sort of jobs to apply for with four. When eight came around, I thought, oh, I've, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of looking for jobs. I'm sick of sending in emails and all the rest of it. Anyway, because of my job search effort, I actually uh, managed to get a summer semester contract out at uni for 70 hours. Now, the job agency rang me and I was they asked me, oh, have you looked for any work? Have you found any jobs? And I said, oh yeah, I got a new contract out at uni for 70 hours. And they go like, oh wow, terrific. Oh, 70 hours, is that 70 hours per fortnight? I said, no, that's 70 hours for the entire semester. So for three months. They're like, well, that's not enough. You'll have to ask for some more hours. I said, oh, okay, I'll just go ring the uni and tell them to give me more hours. That'll be pretty easy, won't it? I found it strange that the job agency was so happy for me when they first heard it. But then as soon as I told them that, that it was only over three months, they were suddenly not very happy at all. But I know why, because basically they get paid by for finding people jobs. I read about it on the ABC or whatever. Uh, if they find people full-time work or enough work in order to not get job seeker, then they get a bonus. And because 70 hours over three months does not meet that requirement. So anyway, they took my details down and pretty much hung up. Luckily, during the pandemic, my wife had been studying at TAFE in order to get a new job. Uh, she graduated in October, and so I helped her look for a job over, the, over about four weeks, and she ended up getting a good job with the Queensland government. 
So now she's getting a fairly decent salary, and I decide that there was no more need for this job seeker. I didn't want to look for any more work. I didn't want to get all these phone calls from these job agencies telling me what I should and can't do and how many jobs I need to look for and blah, 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 blah. So I decided to cancel my job seeker payment. That I'd benefited from it. I'd received that coronavirus supplement. That's all, all I was planning to ever do. So I went online to try to cancel my job seeker. Do you think you can cancel your job seeker online? No, of course not. I tried everywhere. I was looking at tutorials. I was looking at their FAQs. I was trying to, I was doing everything. I could not cancel this damn payment. It turns out there are a number of reasons why you can't cancel your job seeker online, which I won't go into here, but it was pretty mundane, sort of boring reasons. The only thing I could do was co uh, contact Centrelink. They basically said I had to ring them. I thought, oh no, I don't want to ring Centrelink. It'll take me all day. I have to take a day off work, blah, 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 blah. So I decided early morning at eight o'clock to give them a phone call. 19 minutes later, they answered the phone. I couldn't believe it. That must be some sort of record. It's either because they've got more staff now or people have just given up ringing them. I don't know. Anyway, the lady said she had to ask me some exit questions. Why did I want to cancel? Well, I just told her that my wife's got a job now. I've been doing this for a number of months now and all I ever wanted was to get that stimulus while I, um, you know, during the pandemic and all that. Oh, that's right. She was also New Zealander. She said something like, Are you sure you want to cancel? I mean, you can still get the payment. You're still eligible. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I want to cancel because I, I don't want to receive money that, you know, I don't need anymore and I really don't want to continue to doing this. I, I, I don't have a need for it anymore. Okay, I understand. Let me just uh, finalize everything just a second. Anyway, she went away and did something, came back. Okay, I just have to ask you one more question. Are you sure you want to cancel? You are still eligible. Uh, yeah, yeah, I want to cancel. But but why? Why do you want to cancel? It's, it's We can still give it to you. I said, well, are you saying that I can't cancel or can I cancel? No, 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 you can cancel. But I just want you to make sure that of the ramifications. If you cancel... Uh, you'll have to, and you want to reapply, you'll have to spend all that extra time reapplying. You'll have to do another application online and all the rest of it. I know, I understand. I, I don't want it anymore. I don't need it. I'm not strapped for cash. I'm happy. I'm happy to cancel. Okay, it just seems a bit strange. Anyway, she put the cancellation through and it took about two minutes and it was all done. So now I am no longer a welfare recipient. Great. But just last week, the job agency called again. They rang up acting like it was just a normal uh, scheduled meeting. Oh yeah, we're just ringing up to make see how things are going. Uh, did you find some work? Have you been looking for work and all the rest of it? And I told them, well, I'm no longer receiving job seeker payment. Oh yeah, we know, we know, but we're just seeing how things are going. Oh, okay, but no, thanks for ringing, but I'm no longer receiving the payment, so I'm, I'm not... I'm no longer going to, you know, participate in these interviews and so on. Oh, no, 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 we understand. We're just, we're just trying to find out whether you got a job or not, whether if you're still looking for work, all the rest of it. Uh, do I have to answer you? Uh, no, you don't have to, but we just thought it'd be, you know, a bit of a courtesy call to find out what you're up to. Well, yeah, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you sorry because I'm no longer receiving the payment. Uh, okay, okay, uh, did you get a job? Sorry? Uh, just one more question, did you get a job? I'm not going to tell you. It's none of your business, really, is it? I mean, I'm no longer getting the payment. Okay, okay, I understand, I understand. Uh, so, is that a no? Look, I'm not going to tell you, okay? I'm not I'm not going to participate in this anymore. Unless I have to do this, I'm not going to do it. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry for your time. Um, uh, we'll call back again next week. Please don't. Anyway, I got off the phone, a bit upset. I, was, I went and told my wife, oh, yeah, these job agents are still ringing me. They knew that I wasn't on this payment anymore, but they're still calling me. And then she reminded me, they probably want to get their money, they want to get their bonus. If I find a job, they get their bonus $6,000 or $10,000 or however much they get, right? So of course they want me to tell them if I got tell them if I got a job. Well, I didn't get a job. I wasn't really looking for a job, so they wouldn't have got any bonus money anyway. But I didn't feel it necessary to div divulge my uh, private information to some random caller, especially now that I'm not receiving any payment from the government. So they can basically piss off. They did ring back and they did, a, it was a different person this time, and they again asked me, have I found a job? And I told them, well, just to, just to keep the peace, no, I didn't find a job. And they went, oh, okay, thank you. And they hung up. <laughs> anyway, that was my rather long-winded story about my welfare experience. Uh, it was pretty hard to get onto and it was pretty hard to leave. But I'm kind of glad I did it just so that I had some experience with the modern day welfare system in Australia. And from what I understand now, it's a poorly run, inefficient piece of shit. 
perhaps intentionally so. Perhaps they don't want people to be comfortable on welfare and they make it as hard as possible to get welfare, or at least make it as uncomfortable as possible. If you've made it this far, well done. I don't know why you're still listening, but thank you all the same. Cheers!